Hi there! Have you tried Affinity Designer yet? Let's keep going! In this video, I'm going to show you a simple way to convert an image into vector using Inkscape, and bring it into Affinity Designer. Since Affinity Designer doesn't have a built-in image tracing feature yet, this is a quick workaround we can use for now. First, let's create a brush inside Pixel Persona to sketch the word, Happy. Go to the brush panel, create a new round brush, double-click to edit it. Adjust the spacing first so you can clearly see the brush shape. Then change the shape to an ellipse, rotate it slightly, and set the spacing back to zero to make a continuous stroke. Finally, adjust the brush size as you like. Alright, this brush is just a quick one I made for this tutorial. Let's start sketching. I'm sketching freehand without any initial draft. The tools inside Pixel Persona work very similarly to Photoshop, so it should feel pretty familiar. Most of the tools work pretty much the same way. When you finish, just export your work as a JPEG file. Now let's switch to Inkscape. Go to File Import, Then under the path menu, choose Trace Bitmap. You can use either Brightness Cutoff or Auto Trace in the detection mode. Both work fine for this. Lower the Smooth Corners value to preserve sharper corners in your text. Then click Apply. And here we go, we've got our vector version of Happy. Take a look at the result. If you notice that there are too many nodes, you can simplify the path using Simplify Path, just press Ctrl plus L to reduce unnecessary points and make the shape cleaner. After that, simply copy it, Ctrl plus C, back to Affinity Designer, and paste it directly into Affinity Designer. Perfect! As you can see, my sketch isn't very clean or precise. So I'll break it into individual letters and start cleaning it up using Boolean operations. You might notice a problem with the holes inside some letters. They get filled after using divide. Here's why. After you apply the divide Boolean operation, it splits everything into separate shapes, including the holes. Since Affinity Designer doesn't automatically preserve which shapes are holes, those inner parts may end up filled. I'm now selecting each hole along with its matching letter, and using boolean subtract to cut out the inner parts. Technically, you could process all letters at once, but since my sketch was pretty rough, I'm cleaning them one by one. Once that's done, I switch to the pencil tool with sculpt mode enabled to refine the curves. Sculpt mode lets you push and pull the existing path directly making it easier to adjust small details. The key here is to make sure you're starting and ending your edits right on the curve itself for a cleaner result. By the way, if you haven't watched Volume 1 yet, go check it out first, it might help. Take it slow and adjust things as needed. Like I mentioned earlier, if your sketch is clean, you won't need much fixing. If you do need to refine the lines, you can always revisit the Node Tool tutorial in Volume 2. There are plenty of vectorizing tools or image-to-vector converters out there, many with really good quality. And for a free option, Inkscape is perfect. It works well with both black and white and color images. If you don't plan to do this often, I definitely recommend Inkscape. Now let's make it more interesting by adding some 3D effects. Open the Quick FX panel. If you can't find it, 
go to the window menu, or click the little FX icon at the bottom of the layers panel. Try experimenting with effects like inner shadow, outer shadow, glow, and 3D. Adjust the values however you like. Honestly, the hardest part isn't applying the effects, it's just dialing in the settings to match the look you have in mind. The effect I use the most is Gaussian Blur. The others I try sometimes, but not too much. You can try them out yourself and see what you like. You can put effects on anything, objects, groups, layers, or even pictures. Even though effects are on vector shapes, most of them are actually made with pixels, like shadows or blurs. So your shapes stay sharp, but the effects are pixel-based. If you want your file to be all vector, keep this in mind. When you're done, export it as a PDF if you want to share or send it to others. And if you want to scale things up, don't forget to check scale with object for the effects too. It's these little things that make your work in Affinity Designer so much smoother and faster. I know. So you know. Alright, that's it for today's video. A lot of people have been hoping Affinity Designer will eventually add an image tracing feature like this. Personally, I'm not sure if it's absolutely necessary. It would be nice to have, but even without it, there are plenty of ways to get the job done. At the end of the day, there are always multiple ways to approach your work. Just pick the one that works best for you. I hope you found this video helpful, even just a little bit. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.